Hi guys, welcome back to part 4 of our Double Dragon Repair. Uh, you do the repair uh, video series. Um, we are now uh, looking at the uh, sound uh, section of the board and here are your top voted next steps for this video. Number one is check the RAM of the sound CPU. Check the op amps for the different sound channels is number two. Number three, trace back the sound signals from the op amps. Number four, check the potentiometer. And number five, check all Fujitsu ICs which are prone to fail. Thank you very much for all your comments in the last video. If you didn't watch the first three parts of this video series, I highly recommend that you do so before you continue in this video. Otherwise, let's get on with the repair. Okay guys, so let's um, continue with our um, Double Dragon sound section troubleshooting. I was, um, you know, probing the uh, sound CPU, the 6809, uh, in the last video and it appeared to be fine. And um, yes, um, uh, the top suggestion was to actually look at the uh, RAM chip um, of the sound CPU. So uh, let's just do this. Um, the uh, RAM IC for the sound CPU is located on the PCB uh, next to the uh, program ROM over here. Um, so we can look at the data lines starting at pin 9 and skipping pin 12 reaching out to pin 17. So these should be the data lines. So 12, 11, 9, so this is pin 9, 10, 11, 12 is being skipped, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So they are all wiggling the data lines. And we do have address lines from pin 1 to 8, first of all. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They are toggling. Mm. And uh, additionally, we have 19, 22, and 23. So 23, 22, 21, 20, and 19. Okay, those lines are toggling. We have <clears throat> the output enabled at pin 20, 4, 3, 2, 1, 20, which is toggling. And at pin 18, we have the chip select, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, uh, 9, 8. Chip select is also toggling. Mm. And the right enable is pin 21 again. Four, Three, two, one. So it is permanently high means <coughs> that it is reading from the RAM at the moment all the time. That um, I'm not too sure that this is uh, how this is supposed to work. Probably not. Well, I think this just uh, was actually a major clue because um, looking at the read-write signal uh, from the CPU, which was at pin 33, uh, we probed that already. That was actually fine, but let's check again. 40, 9, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, th 3, no. Four, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Okay, so this is thirty-two. Okay, so so the read-write signal is toggling here. Um, if you look at the schematics, you can see 
the read write signal here it's going to basically to three um, ICs to this um, end gate here or oh, it's an end uh, rather actually or oh, just poked into the screen of my MacBook with a logic probe that's not too great okay um, so to, to this NAND gate, uh, also to this inverter here, and then to this um, buffer chip here, as you can see in the schematic. So, and uh, the interesting thing is, if I look at IC64 pin one, another IC, which is here, then I have a toggling signal there as well. That will, That is what we would expect actually to be the case but now interestingly if I look at IC16 pin 1 for instance which should be the same signal um, I'm getting this uh, on the first glance it looks like permanently high signal on the second glance it's a kind of a nervous flicker <laughs> of the logic probe which indicates that there's not really a TTL logic compatible signal on this line meaning that uh, there is no high no clear high and um, low signal states going on uh, but rather the signal might be moving somewhere in between so this can be seen at pin 1 here and also if we look at this guy here which is IC19 pin 11 3, 2, 1 we get the same nervous flickering there so somehow as with the main CPU uh, curiously the read write signal does get to IC64, but on the way to the other guys, somehow uh, the signal is lost or the signal level is uh, being uh, changed. So I think uh, we could actually, to additionally <coughs> find out what's going on, we could uh, look at the signal uh, with the uh, oscilloscope. Okay, so here is what the signal looks like. Uh, you can basically um, uh, actually make out a toggling signal but um, of course uh, you know the baseline is kind of uh, glitchy and also the uh, signal levels are toggling somewhere between you know 2.2 volts and 1.3 volt or something so um, this doesn't make much sense really if we compare this to the output of the CPU okay so I uh, just hooked up both uh, signals um, you know the lower um, signal here being the uh, read write output of the CPU and the other um, signal being uh, what is uh, entering at uh, IC16 and uh, also at uh, IC19 um, somehow uh, well this doesn't really actually this doesn't seem to be a signal of the same origin so I don't know really what's going on there if there's again something uh, wrong with the uh, schematics there um, <clears throat> or what is uh, actually going on here so I guess I will have to um, look at the PCB and follow the traces and um, <clears throat> see if these are actually connected uh, what can be said is that um, <clears throat> the signal input of the read write signal at this IC16 and also at uh, IC19 um, as, uh, as the signal looks it's never going to work uh, this way so uh, I don't know where the signal is really supposed to come from at this pin if there's something wrong in the schematics again uh, over here but uh, well we will maybe uh, find out by it, uh, just looking at the traces and see um, 
then checking what those two ICs with the funny signals are actually physically uh, connected to. Okay, so interestingly, there seems to be a connection problem here on the PCB. There's a wire which is coming from the bottom side of this uh, top PCB. And as you can see, there's a trace leading to this pin, which is the read-write pin. And uh, what is interesting uh, is that if I check continuity between here and here, I do not have continuity. Uh, that is very, very interesting. I think this is actually some cold solder problem. Uh, maybe I can uh, <coughs> show you under the microscope. Let me see, where is it? Yeah, okay, so there it is. So actually it looks uh, like it could be fine, but I don't know if I measure the resistance. Well, <coughs> sometimes I get uh, no connection at all. Sometimes I get a few mega ohms. So I don't know, maybe I will just uh, try to reheat this wire and see if the connection is uh, actually being re-established. Okay, so reheating alone didn't really do the job. So I um, actually added a small piece of wire uh, on the um, on this uh, location and also on the trace uh, connecting to the trace on the board and now i actually got con continuity between um, uh, this uh, spot here and this uh, ic leg over here so um, maybe um, we are getting our sound back so let's uh, check again Okay, so now looking at <coughs> IC19 and IC16, we actually do have uh, uh, the toggling signals back. But unfortunately, still no sound. Still no sound. Okay, so what is Good, actually, now is that we, for instance, have on the um, RAM IC, um, 4, 3, 2, 1, we now do have a toggling read-write signal uh, over there after fixing this issue. But I just came across another thing. Um, I probed around the, uh, you know, um, data and address lines uh, surrounding the... Uh, sound CPU and I noticed there's something which is called um, there's um, a, the sound data bus and the sound data bus um, is a data bus where the um, sound CPU uh, connects itself to the main CPU um, so it can receive you know instructions what sounds to play they will actually be received via the sound data bus as, as it looks and also it uh, issues instructions um, to for instance the circuit that plays uh, digital audio and uh, the uh, sound cpu has its own internal data bus where it is co connected to the rom ic and also to the ram but it also can switch through its internal data bus to the sound data bus. And uh, what is interesting is that the CPU never does that at the moment. So um, as this uh, latch uh, over here is being controlled, um, this is always a high uh, impedance. Uh, so uh, actually the CPU at the moment doesn't want to talk on the sound bus, meaning that it doesn't want to issue um, commands uh, to play digital sounds. Um, actually, all the uh, sound data bus lines are floating at the moment. And what is also uh, maybe uh, 
first and foremost uh, interesting is that there is um, a connection to the uh, data bus of the main CPU, as I said. And uh, so the main data bus of the CPU can also be latched in so that the main CPU can send data to the sound CPU. And actually the control lines for this seem to work uh, actually pretty good. So we do actually have, this is a flip-flop basically, we do actually have the um, clock, uh, um, we do have the uh, clock input and the output enable signals of this flip-flop here. Uh, but we actually never get anything out of this IC on the Q side of the flip-flop. So there is data all along, but never ever is there any um, output. Um, it's always high impedance. Um, and that, I think, is a problem because maybe the sound CPU is at the moment is running and just waiting to receive a command to play a sound. And because it doesn't receive that command, it uh, might be the case that it actually does nothing and doesn't want to talk on the sound bus, etc. So that could be all right. So, but uh, yeah, the question is if there's inf information on the data bus, if there is a signal which indicates that the data bus should now be put through uh, to the sound CPU, why isn't the data from the main CPU reaching through this IC on the sound data bus? Uh, actually, I think this uh, IC, as it looks, has to be problematic. Um, this is IC17, it's an LS374. The control inputs are pin 1 and pin 11. Uh, we can actually see that we are having toggling signals there. Yeah, but um, nevertheless, we are getting no outputs. Let's, for instance, um, take pins two, five, or six, which would be the lower bits of the sound data bus. If we look, this is two, five, six, so there's nothing going on. So I think I will actually just replace this LS374 uh, uh, because I'm under the impression that um, this IC should actually put uh, some kind of data through to the sound bus and actually doesn't. So. Let's go ahead and replace this guy. Okay, well guys, looking at the schematics and um, also probing some of the signals uh, with my oscilloscope, uh, I'm actually beginning uh, really to understand how the circuit is supposed to work. Um, well, I um, actually thought about this signal, be, talked about this signal before, it seems to be some uh, kind of a signal coming from the main CPU to tell the sound CPU that it is uh, wanting to send a command. This signal is going into a flip-flop, which is then connected um, to the uh, IRQ input of the CPU. And um, so if the main CPU wants to uh, let the sound uh, CPU play a sound, it will actually send an interrupt uh, signal through this uh, flip-flop. And um, the interrupt signal can be seen here, which is here in the top line. So there's a lot of interrupt signals going on at the moment. And um, I have another uh, signal um, up on the oscilloscope screen, which is this signal here. And this signal here is um, actually um, the uh, output enable for this flip-flop. And it's also the clear signal for this flip-flop. Um, and that means that with uh, this signal uh, being pulled low, um, actually the interrupt uh, 
signal is being cleared and at the same time the output of the to the sound data bus from this uh, 8-bit flip-flop is being enabled um, and we can see that the data is loaded into this flip-flop when the uh, this um, control signal uh, is coming in so what uh, what is happening is the cpu sound cpu uh, no the the in the main cpu wants to play a sound so it obviously puts the sound command or the sound number or whatever into the data bus and then activates the signal then the contents of the data bus is going into this flip-flop and it is stored there um, the interrupt line is being pulled low and if the cpu is ready to respond to the um to the interrupt that is um, actually at the end of this um, uh, signal here, of this uh, low signal here. At the end, it is ready to respond to the interrupt. It then sends this signal here. This is corresponding to the end of this interrupt uh, here. And uh, with this signal, it will actually clear the interrupt signal and also put uh, the uh, data that ha has been stored uh, on the data bus right onto the sound data bus. So it can then uh, actually read um, the data from the bus. And um, yeah, that's what, that's what can be seen here going into this multiplexer here. And uh, yeah, I think we're, what you can derive from this um, picture on the oscilloscope is that probably the sound CPU is working because it is it it is at least responding to the interrupt you can see that the sound cpu through this line signal line which is coming from a decoder and which is corresponding to a certain address on the address bus uh, through this signal line the uh, cpu is uh, deliberately obviously um, um, it is responding to the interrupt and it's de deactivating the interrupt line. And um, I guess this, that, the CP, that this is a good sign for the CPU uh, working correctly. Okay, I know this might be a bit confusing. I actually talked about this IC before. That is the multiplexer that connects the sound CPU's data bus to the sound data bus. And it's a, it's a bidirectional buffer. And um, well, I noticed before that this signal at pin 19, which is um, uh, the direction signal, is never actually toggling. So this signal is always high, uh, meaning that the sound data bus is never being put through to the sound CPUs data bus so uh, the sound cpu will never actually be able to read what is going on the sound data bus it will have to do so in order to receive commands through the flip-flop mechanism that i just showed you yes i already noticed this but i uh, somehow uh, got over it so this is actually um, after I noticed the problem uh, with this flip-flop, I replaced it, but this is actually a different problem. Um, the, uh, you know, the direction signal that is going into this multiplexer is coming from this IC over here, IC48, LS11. This is um, actually, um, this is an, a triple input end gate. Um, and... Um, uh, as it looks at the moment, we do have uh, three inputs here from um, uh, from this uh, address decoder. There's address lines 11 through uh, 14 going into this um, decoder, and we have eight outputs. And... Um, we have, uh, you know, uh, output bit two, output bit three, and output um, bit seven connected to this triple end gate. At the moment, 
the signal that is coming out of here is always high, meaning that if this would work correct, all three input signals would have to be high all the time. Um, this is something we will have to uh, verify actually. But looking at the schematics, you can already tell if you look at, you know, bit two, pin 13, uh, which is going to uh, uh, this I, uh, this triple end gate, you can see that there's, um, uh, you know, another uh, branch, uh, which is actually the signal that is going into our um, multiplexer, uh, excuse me, into our flip flops uh, to connect the, uh, the main data bus to the sound data bus. And this signal is working. This is the signal that I just uh, showed you on the oscilloscope. Um, it's the signal right here, which is mostly high, but is intermittently low. Um, so actually, um, if this goes into a triple end gate, um, no matter actually what the uh, the the inputs on the other two pins are this would lead to uh, the output being intermittently low at least and not uh, steadily high so okay so looking at this uh, triple end gate this is the first input this is toggling this is the second input it's permanently high and the third input is also high. Interestingly, the output appeared to be high all the time and is now being detected by the logic probe as, you know, being floating mostly. Yeah, but uh, looking at the signal with the oscilloscope, we have that right here. We can see this is a high signal with the intermittent low pulses, one of the inputs to the triple end gate. And this is the output signal. Well, it appears to be actually a permanent signal of about uh, 1.8 volts or something. So this is, this is incorrect. Uh, this can't be, this can't be right. So, um, I think we will have to replace this, um, this, um, triple input end gate, uh, which is actually next to the spot where I repaired this uh, wire and already, um, I noticed when I repaired the wire that it has some corrosion on the legs. Um, also some of you stated in the comments from the last videos, that those uh, Fujitsu logic ICs might be uh, top candidates for failure. This is another uh, Fujitsu part. So I will remove this guy, uh, put in a new one. And again, and as before, we will try to uh, check if we are getting our sound back, back uh, after this step. Okay, so the LS11 is replaced, so let's check out the game. So, hmm, still no music on the title screen. If we coin up the game, we get so something. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so still coining up no more sound oh there it is again mm. okay so it's intermittent when coining up and sometimes it sounds even different okay when we start up the game well no digital sounds as it looks oh but the music is running It was only running for a short time, then it somehow stopped. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, we are getting some signs of life, but still uh, no digital sound. And um, yeah, the the analog sound, so to say, has uh, um, still some problems, obviously.
Yeah, you could just see it if you get the symbol which tells you to advance in the game if all opponents disappeared from the screen. You are still getting uh, the sound actually, but it, this is uh, actually the only sound you are getting at the moment. But um, if I would continue to play now and uh, if I see this uh, please advance symbol again, I would um, again get the sound. This seems to be working constantly. Okay, trying again, just res re did reset the game. Funny, very funny. Okay, just... Let's see if we still get the music. We don't get it this time, as it looks. We don't get any music at all. That is strange. Try again. Okay. Okay, the music just starts to play for a moment, then stops without me doing anything. So, yeah. Mm, very interesting. So, this might be uh, turning out to be a board with really really many uh, multiple uh, problems okay guys um i don't know anything but to actually not finish the repair in this video and uh, get some further uh, advice from you um we actually already fixed uh, three um, things uh, in the audio section in this video and still we are not having everything back, but we're getting some, some signs of life. So um, the digital sounds are still missing. Uh, the digital sounds are coming from those two EPROMs here and um, are working through some of the uh, logic ICs that you see in the sound section over here. Yeah, but what I'm a bit afraid of is this intermittent problem with the, uh, you know, the analog sounds or the sounds from the uh, Yamaha chip. Because, um, as you know, inter those kind of intermittent problems um, might be difficult to troubleshoot. But, um, you know, just tell me in the comments what are your thoughts uh, on the situation and what would you do next it might now we might have reached a, a, a stage of the repair where uh, this is actually getting quite difficult but uh, nonetheless i think the goal should still be to fix this board so i'm very curious what your suggestions are and i hope you are still um, motivated uh, enough to uh, to actually contribute your opinions uh, i would be very thankful um, i will uh, post the next uh, part of this video after i uh, received your suggestions as soon as possible uh, thank you very much for watching this video if you liked it um, check out my other videos and maybe even subscribe to my channel that would help me very much um, okay so Bye for now and uh, see you in the next vid.